Thank you to all my partners, everybody that so into this ministry that helped me, that assist me. I'm currently um, in a deep thought about doing a Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference in North Carolina. And I'll give you the details. It's much from here, but it'll be after my birthday, which is October the 2nd. It'll be after that time. But I'll let you know more in detail as I'm in uh, partnership with uh, the Holy Spirit on uh, strategizing some things. But that is really uh, something that I will be releasing in a state. You'll know for sure if it's North Carolina, but most likely it'll be North Carolina. But I wanna thank all of you all for blessing me, for honoring me. Thank you for everyone that sows into my teachings, the glory, and you are, are connecting with this wisdom and this grace and this glory. So I want you to really think about this, that while you're sowing into me, while you're in your city, there should be a time where you sanctify a day where you go on a dry fast. Um, especially if you're in another state and you're in your city and you can recognize sometimes the flesh rising up in you, in your city, like you find yourself flirting with people, you know, giving your phone number away, like just being loose booty and stuff like that. Yeah, I said loose booty. I'm talking you, Judy, loose booty. You know, Judge Judy ain't got no booty. But I'm talking about you that <laughs> want to want to just be uh, out the box and you you find yourself acting like a fox and then you want to get some locks and, and then you wearing Crocs and then you're thinking about, you know, I'm not going to keep on going. I just want you to understand that there'll be a time where you need to go on a dry fast to reposition your soul in um, the spirit world so that the father could be able to talk to you without no interruption of the fleshly desires. You'll need to get on a day, 24 hours, where you don't eat or drink nothing. You don't eat or drink nothing while you're in your city. And saints, when you do that day, you're not going to be going to work. All right, you're going to be home and it's going to be the day when you're home. And when you're home, how many of you all know there's always a regiment where you like to do certain things? You like to eat certain foods, snack on certain stuff. The father is going to watch you make this sacrifice and he's going to give you the transference from my soul. He's going to let you get it. All right. And you're not just going to be sowing seed. All right. You're not just going to be sowing. You're going to be knowing. You're going to be knowing. And when you're knowing, that's the intimacy with you and the father. That's the, the oneness, the joint unity. Where there's power and where the oil flows. And so this is going to be important. While you're in your city, don't just be idle. Don't just say, okay, I'm not hearing from prophet. Take a day and sanctify it. And do a dry fast. Don't eat or drink nothing. To reposition yourself, even to take that day, read the word and recognize what's really happening to you. I know some of you all like to listen to me teach and you enjoy hearing me talking and seeing me and you, you like me, right? But do you really know who's talking to you? And you're not going to know who's talking to you unless you yourself get out the flesh and you're in the spirit on the Lord's day. All right. So I want you to remember that. So keep that in consideration. All right. Mix your sowing with self-denial. Mix it. Put it in the mixture and recognize I honor God with my seed, but let me honor God with my body. 
Let me honor God with my time and let me be hungry for him. Did you know that sowing is seeking God? When you take finances and you place it into the presence of God, you're seeking God. Remember, the, the seed was for Adam to seek the Lord while he's in the garden. And when God saw how he was seeking him, God said, it's not good for you to be alone. See, God himself investigates your life on what you need, what you desire when you're sowing into him. Saints, would you say that God would have told Adam it's not good for you to be alone if he wasn't sowing? No. The seed shall be for your meat. God is now investigating all the meats that Adam could indulge in. And he tells him, I see something that I want to reward you with because you've been rewarding me. I see something that's going to make you happy because you've been making me happy. I see something that's going to make you cheerful because you've been making me cheerful. I see something that's going to make you smile because you've been making me smile. I see something that's going to make you scream. <laughs> A scream a scream. <laughs> You know, when I say that, when I say that, as soon as I say that, I see Night Professor on the couch eating M&M's looking at Miss Purdy on the screen. That's, every time I say that, scream and scream, I just see Eddie Murphy with do ice cream and uh, M&M's coming out. But God is looking to return the favor back to you. <laughs> Whatever you make happen for the Lord, He's looking to duplicate that same activity back to you. You know, it's amazing that we have this dimension apostolically of sowing in the New Testament because they in the Old Testament had a dimension of sowing and their sowing brought them into wealth. We see Solomon brought into unimaginable wealth, incomparable wealth. And now... The covenant is made new and better. So why would God make it new and better and it was already good? You see, the father is always looking to upgrade the upgrade and make wealth wealthier, make riches richer, make abundance more abundant, make increase increase. Make multiplication multiply. Make addition have additions. He wants to harvest the harvest. He wants to harvest the harvest. And saints, you know, one powerful thing that you're going to recognize throughout the course of your life is that the Holy Spirit has to teach you how to sow, train you how to sow, touch you to sow, and then... Not only that, the Holy Spirit going to have to transform you to soul. And, and that's another, that's, that's, some, that's, that's four powerful elements. He's going to have to teach you to soul, train you to soul. Um, and, and I'm going to show you something that you probably never saw before. Because you probably like, well, prophet, why would you say teach and then train? Ain't teaching is training? Let me show you the difference between teaching and training. Teaching is where I explain something to you. But training is where I pitch you on the battlefield to exercise it to perfection. So when you teach somebody, you explain something to them. It's more of a verbal thing. Oh, my gosh. Here what I hear the Holy Ghost say. When you teach somebody, it is more verbal. But when you train somebody, it's more of a verb. Did you catch that? And I'm not going to say it twice because I want you to watch the replay twice. So <laughs> I'm not going to say it again. So I'm not saying it. No, no, take picture notebook down. I'm not saying it again. You got to watch the broadcast. So when you are, are, are being trained to sow, 
and you being taught to so when you being taught to so the Lord is explaining to you how this anointing works he's he's explaining to you how it worked for other people but when he starts training you now he's going to pitch you on the battlefield and he's going to pit seed amounts in your mind he's going to pit money in your hands mm -hmm. did you know that and the Holy Spirit said this to me, which was so shocking. He didn't say it to me today, per se. He said it yesterday, and I held it in my heart. Did you know that poor people actually love money more most times more than rich people? Did you know that poor people actually be loving money more than rich people? And you say, probably how? Because they don't even got no money. Exactly. And when they get money, they still won't obey God with it. Because they hold it like, I'll never experience you again. So I'm going to love you while I got you. I'm going to take care of you. Look at you, baby. Look at you. I'll never know. I'm going to get you $20 again. So I'm going to make sure I put it in where I need to fit it in. Since you ever see a poor person, they'll pick the, they'll pick the money right in their bra. That's why sometimes you, you, you know what I'm saying, you... You be careful when you see dollars looking all dirty and stuff. It doesn't pass. <laughs> and dollars been somewhere, baby. Dollars been somewhere. <laughs> like, you put that dollars. You, like, what's this white stuff on dollar and stuff? What they got on this dollar? They got all type of residues on the dollar and stuff like that. It'd be dirty dollars. It'd be dirty dollars and dirty dollars and... You, you you wonder what's going on with this dollar. This dollar look like it been through some things. It been, been through, through some things. And, and saints, you know, people, they love money so much, they'll put the money right in their chest. They don't care if they get chest burned. <laughs> they don't care if they, they lose scar tissue. They don't care if they lose... Um, structure or none of that. <laughs> they, they pick the dollar right by their chest. Saying some people love money so much, they'll count it. They'll even count it with their fingers. They'll, they'll <laughs> count the money. <laughs> they count, they count the thing. You ever see people do that? They want, they want lick, lick them, pick them, right there back on the dollar. And saints, people be loving money that don't have money. And you think because they don't have money that they don't love money. But what you can't see is that even when they get money, they will never inquire of God what to do with it. They will not ever sow a seed because that money, when it gets into their hands, they have a robber's mindset. I don't know when I'm going to get this again. So let me go handle my bill. Let me go handle what I wanted to do before. Meanwhile, they don't see that God picked that money in their hands. Because you know what he's doing? He's training them to sow. When God is training you to sow, he brings the money to you even when you don't even know how you got it. Man, dog, I just had five. Man, did you know my cousin just told me that they wanted to pay me back? Gave me $500. And you're like, this cousin don't even don't pay me nothing. But they gave you the $500. Or somebody would say, you know, I owed you money. You know, in my ministry, there's a lot of people that have that happen that their other job will write them months later and say, we want to give you this check. And they don't even work for the job no more. And they recognize that it is supernatural money moving in that direction. Saints, did you know that even harvest money has a seed assignment in it? If you take a note, write that down. Harvest money has a seed assignment in it. Harvest money has a seed assignment in it. Isn't that powerful? The money that God gives you to enjoy still has a seed assignment in it. Because if you spend that money, you're telling God, this is all I see you giving me. But if you sow the money, you're saying, Lord, I'm going to pass my test. I see you. You you, you think you're going to get me on this one. No, I'm going to love you right. I'm going to honor you right. I'm going to treat you right. Because you got that real bag. You got that real blessing. You got that real bank that I'm looking for. You, you got it, and you know that if I sow, you'll be able to give it to me. But if I take what I have, 
I'm telling you, keep that bigger. I'm okay with this. Saints, remember I tell you in my story, I've, I've, I've had money before, but I'm a constantly sowing the money. It, even today, I'm still sowing today. Saints, I'm still sowing today because I'm not taking any current financial status as the finale. I'm going to the next place. And when I get there, I'm going to the next place. And when I get there, I'm always going to find the seed assignment in harvest money. My goodness, that's some good stuff. When you're a sower, your harvests even have a seed test in it. And sometimes you can get so uh, excited about the harvest that you forget. This is not all the Lord is. Even though it's big, it's not all the Lord is. Even though it's, it's abundant, it's not all the Lord is. And when you recognize that, the sowing test that's in this, the harvest, God will promote you to more. Saints, what happens right now if God gives you $2 million? What happens? God gives you $2 million. And he gives you $5 million right now. What happens? Well, you know, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy this. Well, let's track back. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy this. Well, let's track back. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to do this. Well, let's track back. You didn't have no way to get the two million. So why do you have plans for it? Already, you can identify an evil system in you because you didn't have it in your power. You, you can't say I worked for this. I picked my hand. I just did something that's worth $2 million and I got paid for $2 million. You can't say, you know, I just did something to get this $5 million. No, the $5 million just came to you. So when, when, if, if somebody asks you what you're going to do with it, you should say, the Lord's will shall be done concerning this money. Because it was the Lord's will that brought it. So it's the Lord's will that's going to facilitate it. It's the Lord's will that's going to give the ideas for it. It's the Lord's will that's going to inspire my spending. It's the Lord's will that's going to inspire my movements. It's the Lord's will that's going to inspire my perception. And I'm going to receive the seed assignment for every department of this money that I have. And since that was the mindset that broke me open. Because... Do you understand that when you listen to God about sowing money, he does not withhold money from you? The minute that you obey him concerning money, he marks you and he doesn't mark you for the angels to look at his response and say, Lord, you did greater for Abraham. Why are you only doing this for them? God is on a quest to keep on impressing not only the angels, but impressing you. So when God is ready to deal with the sower's life on the earth, he's not dealing with their life to do a small thing. He's dealing with their life to do a big thing. So what did the word say? God is able to make all grace abound towards you. He's able to make all grace, but oftentimes he's not able, he's not able to make that grace because that ability is hid from your consciousness. You're not thinking about it. You're not talking about it. You're not praising for it. You're not looking for it. And you don't know that this is on God's heart. Do you think that he's looking at you at the place that you live right now and saying, this is all I have for you? No. Ministering spirits, they will heed you when you go forth with giving them decrees concerning your finances. If you release a ministering spirit to go forth and minister for you financially, they will bring to you what you sent them on the, on the mission to go and bring to you. And did you know that God has given you the freedom where you can claim financial levels? He's going to test you to get there. He's going to give you instructions. He's going to give you tests. But you can claim whatever financial level you want. If you believe that you so you can handle billionaire status, you can claim that. If you believe you can handle 500 million, you can claim that. 
If you believe you can handle 10,000, you can claim that. But saints, I want you to hear me. Don't claim $5 million and you only got five cents worth of loyalty and dedication. Don't claim $10 million and you only got 10% worth of focus and concentration and adoration for the Lord. Don't claim $50 million and you only got 50% of thanksgiving and praise and you forget about God 50% of the time. You forget to even say thank you. You forget to dance before the Lord in a week. You don't even give the Lord a wave offering. Did you know I taught my daughters in their glory homes to give the Lord a wave offering? When I was small as a little boy, my mother used to have me wave to the Lord. It's a wave offering. They used to do it in Moses' day. Why people don't do it no more? Because it's the Old Testament. No, nah, it's because you got the old man still operating. The old man don't know who God is. The old man is just a robot. It's just religious. It just does things that make it feel like it's connected to God. When you really know the Lord Jesus, you'll find yourself engaging him. Lord, do you like this outfit that I've got on? Saints, do you know sometimes I'm talking with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, tell me, son, I like that hair like that. I, I like that outfit. Sometimes, did you know, uh, I, I, was, I, was, uh, I was getting dressed today and the Holy Spirit said, I would like for you to wear that Gucci shirt. I got you that Gucci shirt because I want you to wear it. I, I want, I, today, I see that shirt on you. Do you know that? That's how the Holy Spirit works. When, when you know the Lord, he'll, he, his, his spirit will constantly be talking to you because he's addicted to you. He wants you to be addicted to him. So in this last two minutes, I just want you to catch this. The sowing life is all about you putting spice in your romance with God. If you don't operate as a sower, you're showing the Lord, I'm not really interested in you. I'm not really fascinated with you. I'm fascinated with the insurance, man. I'm fascinated with my cable, man. I'm fascinated with my my with my uh, my my phone, man. I'm fascinated with my gas, man. I'm fascinated with all these other men. But you, oh Lord, I'm not fascinated with you. So you think about it. It be your declaration to God to show God, I am recognizing that you are my romance. You are my love. You are my God. You are my king. You are the one that I need. And saints, when you're sowing, that romance brings you into riches. It brings you into revelation. It brings you into restoration. So I want you to think about this for now on. When I sow, I'm showing the Lord I want to keep our relationship spicy. I'm showing the Lord that I want to receive what he has planned for me as his bride. And I'm also showing the Lord that I will make his will come to pass every moment, every day. I'm going to endorse his will. I'm going to sponsor his plan. And the, that sowing that you does is you collecting a new anointing. You receive a new anointing to your life when you sow. You take on the next dimension and glory that your apostle is in. The apostolic brings seed sowing into a new chamber of increase. That's why when you are a sower, God will give you an apostle to sow into so that you can sow into the apostle and receive the full benefits for the seed. An apostle is firstly in the kingdom. When the apostle is in your life, now you are sowing into Jehovah God. Jehovah God is taking your seed from the earth realm. It's an apostolic anointing that breaks slow money, delayed finances, delayed provision off your life. And that's how even your health is being restored through the apostolic. It's the apostolic anointing that Jesus is moving in when you see the lame walking and the maimed being healed and the blind seeing and the deaf hearing and the dead being raised. It's all the apostolic anointing. So remember this, the apostolic anointing, it houses the seed. It is the photosynthesis of the seed. And there's apostolic finances that come when you're sowing into the apostle. What is apostolic finances? It's dominion cash. 
It's dominion money. It's money that defends you. You know, Ecclesiastes says that money is a defense. So this is money that brings a hedge around your life as you have it so that Satan won't be able to interject Satan's will to embarrass you or put you to shame because you'll have that money to deal with matters. Apostolic finances is where the Lord allows you to challenge the principalities in your city and the cities that he'll send you to because you have the power of that apostolic grace flowing for you to financially rule and reign with Christ. When you have that apostolic finances, you have power over evil that wants to delay you. And you could do your thing in every situation because when Satan says no, you'll have the finances to say yes back. And money will override the the deceptive devices of the devil. Remember what I'm telling you. Apostolic finances are the reward for laying down money at your apostle's feet. You can't lay down money at the apostle's feet if the apostle's body is not in your city. So how do you lay down money at your apostle's feet? Their feet is the direction of their mind. Their mind releases their teachings. So you sow into their teachings that's how you lay the money down at their feet. Every time you sow into their teachings, you're pitting the money at their feet. And when the money is at their feet, their feet is a location where God releases a fresh direction to your life. It's where the Lord releases power for the direction of your feet. And not only the direction of your feet in life, but the direction of money to come to you. The apostolic feet the apostle's feet directs money in your path. So money cometh to you while you're being led by the spirit into hidden riches, money also cometh. There's a realm where the spirit is leading you to find money that's hidden, but it's also a realm where the spirit is leading money to find you while you're hidden. There's a realm where God is using you to find money that's hidden, and there's a realm where God is using you to find the money that's hidden. 